I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. For a free month of Treehouse, head on over to teamtreehouse.com slash show. In this episode, we'll be talking about app.js to make mobile web apps. We'll be talking about Loopback, a new web app framework, SVGs, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a project called app.js. App.js is a templating system and a lightweight JavaScript UI library for creating mobile web apps that behave like native apps, sacrificing neither performance nor polish. I know that because it says it on the web page. They have themes for both iOS and Android, and it provides a lot of common UI elements that you would expect to see in a framework. So we can change the top bar color there. It provides just a whole bunch of different options for lists, items, buttons, all sorts of inputs, and pretty much everything that you would expect from a little framework like this. Uh, the demo works for both iOS and Android if you want to get a little bit more native with how your app is going to look. Now, there is some very thorough documentation that goes over all of the different components. Now, this is broken down into two things where pages have controllers and navigation stacks. A controller allows you access to, in this example, they have the home controller, which will be the main stack inside of the application. You can define certain functions to run whenever the page is loaded and also define different functionality inside there. Now, there are a ton of different components inside here. You can see it looks very much like a native application. The speed is also pretty good. I did not notice any lag when I was going through this site. Um, everything is available up on GitHub, like pretty much everything we talk about, and you can go through and check out the documentation and maybe create a project with it. I don't know, if you wanna. It's pretty nice. You don't have to. Yeah, it's, it's optional. We just throw that out there for you. It's up to you, whatever you do with it. It's up to you. Next up is SVGO GUI. It is a Node WebKit-based GUI for SVGO. What? Oh. What does that mean? GVS. Right. That's SVGO backwards. So GUI Graphical User Interface SVGO Scalable Vector Graphic Optimizer. Wait, what the heck is that? I've heard of SVGs, but what is SVGO? Well, it is this library that allows you to optimize SVG graphics. And scroll down the page here, you can see that it removes all sorts of bits of metadata that you can safely remove and you don't really need in an SVG when it's outputted from a program like Illustrator, for example. So you can remove all of that stuff and get a much smaller file size for your SVG. What this project is, SVGO GUI, is it's a desktop-based app where you can just drag and drop your SVG files and then immediately see the results. And I like that they have this little column here that says profit. That's basically the percentage that you've decreased the file size. So it's pretty cool. You can download it for OS X Windows and it's still not available for Linux, but definitely be sure to check that out. Very, very cool. Nice, nice project. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have a project called Loopback. This is a very interesting API server that is powered by Node.js. Now, this is a pretty huge project and framework, so we're not going to get into everything about it. Just kind of wanted to put it on your radar if you're interested in doing any kind of backend development with Node.js. It's very, very easy to install. You just install it with NPM like you are normally used to, and then create and generate your project, and you are good to go. Create your models, and then boom, you get a brand new project with a REST API. Now, it also has client SDKs that make it very easy to use this backend server for Android, iOS, and there is even an Angular plugin. It works with most databases, and it's, it's really cool. If we scroll down here, it gives you an API explorer very, very easily. Like, it's just built right in. You can explore the API along with documentation 
for what all the different parts of the API do. It also supports push notifications and file attributes. You can write to the file system pretty easily. Anyway, like I said, it is too big of a project to go through everything on the show. Wanted to put it on your radar. You can find more information in the show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. And also don't forget to sign up for a 30 day free trial of treehouse at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Next up are some single element CSS spinners. Well, what is that? Basically, if you have something that you need to load into the page, you might want to show some sort of spinner or animated image to indicate that the page is indeed loading, something is happening, and you're about to see the data that you requested. Well, sometimes you can load in an animated GIF for this sort of thing, but these just use a single element, which in some instances might be a little bit better. So how are they doing this? This is just using a single HTML element for each one of these. How could we possibly create circles like this and let alone animate them. Well, if we view the source on this, you can see that there's a bunch of animation keyframes here. And what they're doing in each keyframe is creating several box shadows. I thought this was pretty clever. So they're taking a single HTML element and then they are displacing several box shadows and just offsetting them from the element in the center. And then over time, they animate that same box shadow property, and that's how you get the spinning animation. All of these work in a pretty similar fashion, but even if you're not interested in these CSS spinners themselves, it's still pretty cool to check out just to see how this is actually built. Yeah, very, very nice. Next up, we have a post over on the Chrome DevTools documentation on JavaScript memory profiling. Uh, memory profiling is very important as we have larger single page applications that are going to be long running inside of a browser tab. And when you have memory leaks, that can be pretty devastating on smaller devices with limited memory, such as phones and certain tablets. So this documentation in the Chrome DevTools goes through and helps you diagnose how to find these memory leaks, what happens throughout the entire stack, and even how to do snapshots and determine where the memory leaks are coming from and how to fix them. There is a ton of information in this post. We're not going to be able to go through it all, but it does have some really, really interesting things that it touches on. I'm going to say, go down towards the bottom here. It shows you garbage collection is something that you need to be aware of also when you are dealing with memory leaks because the garbage can be collected at different points in the cleanup process. What exactly does that mean? So let's use this example right here. You have a body tag with a few divs underneath it. This div with the ID of tree has a couple of unordered lists inside it. Let's say we are going through and we want to remove this div with the ID of tree and also do something with this anchor with an ID of leaf. Well, depending on where and when we remove these items from the DOM, the garbage collector may not go back through and remove it from memory if it still has a reference to it that hasn't been picked up. So this post shows you how to use the dev tools to actually go through and diagnose those sort of things. Like I said, very, very in-depth. Cannot read it all on here, but definitely check it out, especially if you're building single page applications. Next up is Skipper, which is a lightweight, a lightweight, faster slideshow plugin for jQuery. So if you look here, I can click these arrows and I can go to different images in a slideshow. Wow. Just like you would expect. You so are navigating us through that slideshow like a good Skipper. So nothing terribly special here, but it is pretty lightweight and it's very fast and it's just really well done. If you skip one of the images, would you say you are, you are a skipper of images you in could, this slideshow? You, you could say that, Jason. I did say it. So if you include the skipper CSS at the top of your page, and then you include the skipper JavaScript at the bottom of your page, just after you include jQuery, then you're all set up and you're ready to include the HTML that you'll need. So 
you just create this container and then you create a target and then inside of that you create these divs with a background image and then you can initiate it with a little bit of jQuery just like that. And of course, if you want to set some of the different options here, you can do that. You can adjust the speed. Say, for example, you didn't want to have the arrows, you could set that to false and so on. So there's a bunch of different options there. Very customizable, just really well done. Definitely be sure to check that out. Hmm, very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about all we have time for on the show today. I am at jcypher on Twitter. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. You can also search for us in iTunes. We are The Treehouse Show. And I'm at NickRP on Twitter for more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile business, and so much more. Be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com slash show for a 30-day free trial. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.